Behind every incredible LEGO creation is a meticulously sorted out collection of pieces. Every piece the builder can imagine, instantly accessible. And for what they don't have, entire businesses have formed around sorting and supplying every piece LEGO has ever made. But here's the problem. Sorting's not very fun. And around the world, millions of pounds of LEGO bulk is essentially going unused. So I want to solve this at a massive scale. This is my LEGO sorting machine. The journey to design it, and the deadline to demo it at a real Brooklyn store. There comes a time in a man's life past which he can no longer write any enterprise SaaS code. I needed something new. There's always been a certain special project lurking in the back of my mind. All the hours I've spent sorting Lego, I was having visions of a future where no one had to do this ever again. But I've never done anything like this before. No hardware, electronics, robotics, etc. So, where do we start? Where it's possible to copy, that's what I want to do. Genuinely, I would have made zero progress if there wasn't previous work for me to study on YouTube. However, I'm going to add two giant constraints that no other machines have met yet. First, it must be reproducible. Given mass production is the ultimate breakthrough that we're looking for, I want everything to be 3D printable or easily bought online. This is the main reason that it's not made out of Lego itself. The main superstructure will be built out of this aluminum extrusion, which is super strong, and the electronics are gonna be centered around an Arduino. You'll actually see a lot of parallels between this and how open source 3D printers have been designed. Second, it must be extensible. The platform that we design needs to extend to hundreds of categories. Uh, there's a lot of different kinds of Lego. There are three main stages to building a Lego sorting machine. First, the feeder. This takes a bucket of pieces and using a combination of vibrating channels and conveyors, dispenses just one piece at a time. Second, classification. This uses computer vision to identify what piece we've just got. And third, distribution. This just puts the piece into a bin. June, I was so naive back then. I didn't yet see the feeder for what it was, the demon that threatens to strangle this project to death. Essentially, we need to take this pile of pieces and pick out just one piece at a time. This is actually a really gnarly challenge. Uh, and honestly, I think like 80% of the problem of building a Lego sorting machine is right here. The separation process is gonna look like this. A very slow conveyor belt beneath our bucket of pieces is going to pull out just one clump at a time. And then these two vibrating channels are going to work together to untangle those clumps and hopefully just put one piece at a time onto the main conveyor belt. The principle of the vibrating part of the feeder is simple enough. You take a funnel and you add a source of vibration and you put the whole thing on some sort of suspension, like springs. And then you angle the springs somewhere between 15 and 45 degrees to direct the vibration. I chose 45 degrees and uh, never looked back. This is what they call foreshadowing. I went through numerous revisions of these vibrating channels and the thing would either do basically nothing or literally tear itself apart. It was shaking so violently. I had to get a dopamine hit of some real progress, so I moved on to something that I thought would be a little easier. How do you arrange a bunch of bins in such a way that you can also route pieces to them efficiently? Previous solutions have used a conveyor belt with compressed air that shoots pieces off into bins, but this isn't very space efficient. This is a one dimensional bin layout, and we gotta get at least two dimensions. I'd also like to avoid adding compressed air for complexity's sake. Some people have opted for a circle, but I also don't think this is a solution. As I said, the design needs to be arbitrarily extensible and a circle can only get so big. So how do we have a grid of bins, like any old cabinet up against a wall, and get pieces into any of those bins? Maybe a gantry would work. I, I like this direction, but I think it's too complex for me to tackle right now. Here's my concept. There's a conveyor belt, and as pieces travel down, doors can knock pieces into chutes. Each bin gets its own door attached to the chute, and if they want to catch a piece as it's falling, all they need to do is open the door. Conveniently, this makes each bin addressable by a coordinate pair. If we want to send a piece to the second bin in the third column, all we need to do is open two doors, run the main conveyor belt, and we can assume it fell into the right bin. I made the conveyor belt out of this thin rubber anti-slip flooring material, uh, which I cut into strips and glued together. And the doors are controlled by the cheapest servo motors that you can buy online. Obviously you can't plug dozens of servos into a single Arduino. So I've got this daisy chain of PWM control boards, which theoretically lets us expand to over 750 doors. Okay, so say the feeder works, say we have a piece, how do we actually know what it is? I could do a whole deep dive into like computer vision, AI, but luckily for us, literally 100% of the problem is already solved here. Recognize is a public API where you send an image, 
and it'll respond with a list of predictions for what Lego piece you've got. And it's really good. That's it. There's no catch. Once it tells us which piece we probably have, we look up that piece's category on Bricklink and check if we've already reserved a bin for that category. If we did, send it there. Otherwise, reserve an empty bin for the new category. I then have two miscellaneous bins. The first is for pieces that we successfully classified, but we didn't have any empty bins for, and the others for pieces that we were unable to classify. So things that might not even actually be Lego in the first place. I now have no other options. I must confront my arch nemesis and get back in the ring with the feeder. Summarizing this would be like describing wandering aimlessly through a dark forest. It's honestly just boring. I systematically went over every variable noting how it changed the feeder's behavior. And that's when I realized one extremely obvious variable that I hadn't touched since I started. Do you remember what it is? The springs, dude, the springs. After reducing the angle of the springs from 45 to 30, literally like the clouds parted and the whole thing just clicked. In retrospect, 45 degrees was like the stupidest angle I could have chosen. If I understand correctly, that's like the exact theoretical maximum angle that this type of vibration might actually work at. Around this time, I think I had what was my best idea yet. Although the vibration handles some of the separation, particularly stubborn pieces need to be separated here, where the first hopper dumps pieces onto the second. But once they've fallen down, it's really important that they get out of the way before any more pieces arrive, Otherwise, we're right back at square one. So how do we know the pieces have gotten out of the way? Previous sort of designs have used a very simple procedure for controlling the hoppers. You just run them in a routine pattern. Pulse it on, then off, on, off, then run this part and repeat the whole process. And if you tune that routine well, the feeder works most of the time, but not all the time. So what if we just put a camera above them, do some computer vision and boom, now we have a ton of information. Is there a piece in the way? Do we need more pieces from the bucket? Has a piece fallen onto the main conveyor, at which point we need to halt everything ASAP. This is all done with a custom fine-tuned YOLO model, which is small enough that it's able to run at about 15 frames per second just on my laptop. So we get pretty close to real-time information about the state of the feeder. Again, the only way that the feeder can fail is by dispensing more than one piece at a time, and the vision control works really well to prevent this. I think it was worth the pain. Past this point, everything actually worked. Like, I can't overstate how huge this was. It's even got a UI that shows you what the machine sees and the classifications and lets you reassign bins to new categories. The machine can sort for hours and hours unattended, just diligently doing its work. And he sits motionless till it's time to work again. We could all take a page from his book. And that's when the world threw me its final curveball. This is Chris, and this is Great Brick Lab, which sells thousands of Lego pieces to people like me every week. Here, many people sort Lego pieces, sometimes at a high level, like just the bricks, and then all the way down to very specific pieces. It's then cataloged and put into specific drawers where people who are fulfilling orders can go find them and package them up and send them to customers. And this is where I got a true glimpse of the scale of the problem. Chris and other bricklickers who are here each have thousands of pounds of unsorted Lego pieces that it just doesn't make sense to list on their store, and so it goes unused. I wonder if he'll be mad if I peruse a little bit Minecraft Steve. So it goes without saying that this demo has to go well. Can the machine be transported? Maybe, but this mess has got to go. It will not survive the plane. The electronics need to be consolidated into a PCB. With only one shot to get it right, I reviewed the schematic over and over, pulled the trigger. I haven't been this excited to get a package in the mail in like 10 years. Obviously, I really, really hope that this works, but even if it doesn't, dude, having your own PCB that you designed in your hands is, is crazy, it's so cool. But this is the part where everything actually has to go right now. If this works, I think basically everything works. I don't know how it could be true. This is just too close. I get could be other issues, but that's not good. Uh, let's just upload it. We're in business. Holy cow, I just typed in the wrong numbers. I stuffed it all into a tub and brought it across the country. I was definitely stressing that something was gonna catastrophically break in transit, but the setup and demo went pretty well. It sorts at about two pieces per minute, so it's kind of slow and the noise isn't ideal. Maybe 5% of the time we get a critical failure, uh, perhaps a piece falls off the conveyor or there's a bad classification, but it works. And that's what this prototype was designed to do. So the big goal, did I achieve mass production, scale, 
No, but we're not done. And we're not done until there's a hundred of these things out there. So let's talk about open source. I get a lot of messages asking for the files and the resources to build this machine. But here's the truth. You don't want what I have. It's time to move on from this version. Any more time spent on V1 needs to be diverted to engineering on V2. And V2 is gonna be insane. It's gonna be more compact, faster, more reliable, easier to assemble, and finally, open source. If you wanna get involved or stay in the loop with this project, check out the links in the description. Mechanical, electrical, and manufacturing experts are of critical importance on a project like this. That's it for me. This has been my journey so far, but honestly, we are just getting started. See ya.